I do spend a lot of time driving around trying different chargers, yet in all my time I've never seen an actual installation actually happening. Yeah, seen lots of signs of ground preparation, signboards up and everything, where I think a charger might be going. And then regularly see advanced groundwork, where I can see the concrete bases going in. And I can see at that stage it is going to be a charging station. I sometimes even meet the installers, but always just before or just after they install the actual chargers themselves. Well, Dave takes it on, finally finds a live installation right on his doorstep. Or does he? Well, recently I went to Trentham Gardens and just missed that installation of the Tesla V4s by only a few days. Likewise, Hilton northbound services where the charge units had just been lowered into place, but not yet connected nor had the branding placed in on them. And then Warwick Services, where I encountered my first contact with Apple Green, meeting the installers, but again, just a day or so too soon, they were finishing up the ground preparation. Or well, just so close so often. But last week, I heard about an installation I believed I could film live. And while normally the chargers are often miles away, out of reach if I heard of them being installed, I can't get there in time, this one last week was 100 yards away, right on my doorstep. It couldn't have been any closer. Actually, 100 yards, no exaggerating. Surely I would get to film a full installation this time. Well, the ground was clearly marked out and the area fenced off by the time I got there. An electrical box was already installed, but it was empty, and there were no chargers. Seems I was in luck. It looked like a twin installation in keeping with others nearby. If it was to be the same, there would be a 60 kilowatt CCS2 twin bay rapid charger, and the other would probably be an 11 kilowatt Type 2 twin bay fast charger. Well, I downloaded the app and tried registering, but the registration process was really complicated, demanded a lot of documents which I didn't have. I began to suspect this was not a public charging station, might even be a private one, yet it was located on a main road. Anyway, I waited for some action. Well, I checked it over several days, nothing much was happening. Then two days later, a van arrived with three men and they began to work. Measuring, chatting, measuring, chatting, measuring, ringing the office for advice. Not that much seemed to be done before it was lunchtime and they jumped in the van and disappeared. I checked later, no sign of them. Checked again later, still no sign, so I gave up for the day. So next morning went out to get, no way, the charges were in. The 60 kilowatts still had the shiny hooks attached, used to lower it into position. How could I have missed that? It wasn't working yet. It looked like the power had been connected, but not switched on. Certainly when I went back later that, uh, that evening, uh, in the dark, there were no lights on. Anyway, I knew there was another identical installation, fully installed and working, just half a mile away. So I thought I'd wander over there and film that one. Well, as it was in the car park of a commercial centre and a hotel, I went into both to find out who owned them and how much they charged. But both hotel and centre denied any knowledge of them. And with nothing on the charges themselves and unable to register with the app, yet I used the same app, it looked like another dead end. But I am getting much closer. It's only a matter of time. Still, it got me out and about. It got me a good bit of exercise following Google Maps to get to the operational one. And the weather was glorious. Actually, a bit of a heat wave. It was about five degrees Celsius above normal ten temperatures and a blisteringly hot sun. But I couldn't hang around much longer. Back to work for me. Maybe I'll have better luck next time. Subscribe to follow along. I'm Dave.